Hi, this is Dan Goldman, CPO at Rhodes. Today I'm taking you through a full Rhodes restoration using Rhodes official spares. Now sit back, relax and enjoy. What we want to do now, so just to explain what I've been doing here in the background as well, um, in order to get a really good result from the piano overall and make sure the overall setup is optimised, you need to start from the ground up, so that includes levelling the keys, levelling the hammers as you can see I've done here, and then setting all the dampers to a good bass height as well, as well as setting the tone bars on the harp to the height of the time block as your bass line as well to work from. So everything needs to be in a really good position in order to get the best from all the parts in the piano. There's no point installing the new parts without uh, getting everything else in shape at the same time and you'll really feel the benefits of that um, if, you, if you set everything up and regulate it well in the first place. So what I've done here is I've set the hammer heights um, to um, what we do is we measure from the lowest part of the key here where it drops down under the hammers. We measure from there to the top of the hammer tip and that measures around uh, 60 millimetres or maybe a little more, 65. Um, you can go up to 70 really if you want as well but generally 60 to 65 millimetres is, is about right. And so I've leveled them all to that level. In order to do that, it's quite a long-winded process, but uh, you set a few to that height, and then the way you do it is by either shaving material off the back of the underside of the key pedestal. That's if the, uh, you shave material off if the hammer is too high, so the hammer will then drop down, or you, you can add some tape here, which is just some electrical insulating tape which I find works really well you can add layers of that um, to raise the hammer tip back up to get them in level so you just repeat that process uh, all the way along the piano um, once that's done recheck all your, your key leveling along the front make sure everything looks level which it pretty much does now um, it's an iterative cyclic process so you have to keep checking and tweaking but you will get there um, and then you also want to then put the harp down at this point, take away the magic mallet, um, and set your strike line. But first of all, what you would do is you set the, make sure that all the tone bars in the midsection, which is a really good reference point to see if, if your strike line is correct, um, are set to regulation height, which you set with a uh, time block. So you just go up the whole piano and you set, put the time block under the front lip of the tone bar and just repeat that for every single note to give you a good baseline starting point for your overall harp setup. This also helps with your damper setup as well. Sometimes on the top bars, you won't be able to get the, even when you've uh, unscrewed what we call the escapement screw, which is this keyboard side screw in the every tone bar. This is the escapement screw, this is the voicing screw. Sometimes on the treble ones, even when you unscrew this, it won't give you enough height to get the block under, so you then need to also pull the voicing screw up there to slot it under, and then lock it back down. Okay, so I've been through the mid and the treble now, setting the regulation tone bar height. I'm just going to check the bass as well. I did some of this a bit earlier, but I'm just going to double check this. Never skimp on your setups. Spend that extra bit of time getting everything dialed in and regulated. It also makes the piano feel better as well because if you know if all your hammers are at the right are at a uniform height or the keys are leveled or your tines are at the a nice height up to my height or your damper felts and damper arms you'll be in a really really good place and the effects are massive the difference between 
any old piano and how it can be it can be can be huge you'll surprise yourself i'm sure right the next thing we are going to do is um set our damper heights so with the help of mr magic hammer it's going to prop the heart back up so once you have um, installed all your damper felts and all the damper combs are set nicely in the piano you then want to establish your starting height for your damper arms now generally i find that a good height to start from with our new combs and damper felts is about 120 millimeters around there 120 to 125 millimeters again you measure from the shallowest part of the key at the back to the top of the damper felt and you want that measurement to be about 120 millimeters and see how you go from there it's a really good starting point so once you've um, set one you can then copy by eye all of those so we're just going to start doing that we're going to go from <coughs> middle C upwards and then middle C downwards and how you do that is you get, you support the damper finger on the damper comb from underneath with your thumb and then put your index finger on the top and then just gently, gently bend in that kind of motion. So apply pressure there whilst pushing up with your thumb underneath and that will increase the height of the dampers. So you can now see that these are significantly less. These are the ones that haven't been bent up. So we're just going to repeat that process. You also, you want to make sure that you don't bend where the strap is as well on these upper arms. Um, just make sure you bend that portion there between where the strap attaches and the felt. Right, so we've set all the dampers now to 120 millimeters high, uh, which is a really good starting point for beginning the sonic setup of the piano. Now, this era of piano comes with its own caveats, which, because they've got aluminium harp supports, unlike the earlier pianos, which are wood, if you want to uh, change the strike line, which is the position of the harp on the side supports here if you want to change that you have to then uh, re-drill holes and tap them into the aluminium which is a bit of a convoluted job but it's worth doing because once you find that sweet spot of um, positioning of the harp on the side supports the whole piano will just come to life you'll just hit a spot and you'll just be like all right wow yeah that sounds incredible now it re it'll really sing when you hit a key it'll just the sound will really open up really nicely um, and, and that's what you want from any rows. There's so many where they're just not set up optimally and you just can never get that bark and bite out of the pianos. Another thing to mention with regards to dampers is that the material that we're using in the Rose Official Spares is a, an incredible material. It's really tough and it's super springy um, and quite hard to bend, which is how it should be. It's got a lot of tension in it, which is what you need. However, you might find when you install them into the keyboard that... Um, the keyboard feels too tense because it's the dampers that dictate the entire feel of the piano um, more so than any other part of, of the piano save for the interaction of the um, key pedestal which is the back of the key with the felt on and the underside of the hammer so those those are very critical points as well but damper tension is the thing that you'll notice straight away if there's too much tension you know you'll you, the piano will be like a real slog to play you feel like you're having to really attack it with all your kind of body weight all the time uh, which you don't want if for any reason you want to lay off on some of the tension you might particularly find that the bass end is more tense because the bass end combs damper combs need more tension in order to stop the longer tines and particularly with the Rhodes official dampers we were very very focused on getting optimal damping from the longer tines which is a much more difficult thing to achieve especially with previous Rhodes dampers, which were a lot softer 
and a kind of different design. So you may want to ease the tension off. Now, if you want to do that, it's a simple thing to do on the surface, but you just have to go very carefully. If you um, look at the back of the damper combs here, you'll see uh, this thin kind of area here where the damper comb fingers or arms, whichever you want to call them, thin out. And that's the tension area there. If you want less tension, you relieve the tension by pressing down on this area uh, a set number of times. Start off three or four times to start and see how you go, then feel the keyboard and check your damping out. If you want to put tension back, you pull up on that same thin area there uh, with the strap detached. So um, now everything's set. I'm confident we've got a really good foundation to build from here for setting up the harp. So we're now going to flip the harp down and we're going to start um, setting the tine and pickup positions on the journey to getting our optimal uh, roads sound. Right, so now in order to um, set the optimum strike line for the piano, which is the position in the harp on the top, as I mentioned earlier, um, what I like to do is set up the bottom E, the middle C and the top E, and once you get it to a position where they're all kind of speaking in the most kind of open, dynamic way possible, that's where the harp should be positioned. As I mentioned earlier, that, on, um, that may entail drilling new holes, as I had to do here, and then tapping them. Um, you may be able to get away with not doing that, but um, on this one I had to drill new holes, and I also had to drill a new mounting hole in the harp frame for putting the hinge through as well just so when the hinge is attached it wasn't in the wrong position so as you can hear now if you listen to the bottom E now that I've set it optimally you've got a really nice strong tone there on your middle C it's speaking really dynamically so it'll go all the way from that's kind of where the piano was sitting earlier before we did all this work. It was kind of that was the maximum dynamics, and now you've got all that. But you can also hear how the damper's snapping really nicely to a nice clean note off as well, which is what you want, which is the beauty of all these Rose Official new parts. Just the the detailing that you can, the levels that you can take it to, these parts really allow you to take it as far as you want which is a really beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, and then the top E. That's also speaking really nicely and I haven't even brought the pickups in yet on that note. So you just want a nice full dynamic, bright tone from the piano. And we've definitely got that, which is exactly what we want. So now the next stage is to start actually working on the harp and what I call detailing, which is uh, setting your voicing and tweaking the dampers and just getting all these things, these small interactions to really um, work optimally. So before I flip the harp up to do the sort of finer tine to pick up positioning, I'm going to just look for any times that are stupidly high or low at the front of the pickups just to give us a good starting point so and I'll, i'm also going to back off any pickups that are snagging on the ends of the ties or way too close or uh, that just are positioned off like that so this will involve um like no audio we're just gonna from the piano we're just gonna do it visually initially so as i've already set all the escapement screws which are these keyboard size screws on every tone bar to the regulation height which is three eighths of an inch or 9.5 millimeters the same as the uh, the time block which is around here somewhere um, we know that we can we've got a good even baseline to start uh, moving our time positions so just going to take these down a little now there's a general rule of thumb that I go by. I kind of think of the harp in three sections, which is easy to remember, uh, divided by 
these two brackets. So you've got your bass up to this first bracket, your mid up to the second bracket, and then your treble up to the top. So to demonstrate the time to pick up position, as I was saying, um, in the bass section, the time kind of wants to be about two mil above the center of the pickup. Mid, bottom of the time to the top line of the front of the pickup. And then for the treble area, very similar to the bass, the time wants to be a couple of mil above the center of the pickup. And that's what we're gonna try and do here. We're gonna do it from the top first and then flip the harp and just double check that from under, underneath and see where we're at at that point, audio wise. We've got a few times that are kind of off center here as well. Um, they've been attached to the tone bar off center originally, so they're kind of off like that, but we can deal with those by moving the tine to center with the tone bar. Um, it's best to do that in a vice and also moving the pickups. You can see the pickups are kind of moved over like to one side as well. So we want to try and straighten those a bit as we go along as well. And it's normal for the tines to move a little bit as you're voicing them. Just hold it with your hand and you want to get the, all the new parts to seat together nicely as you're voicing. And they'll gradually find their kind of natural, ideal uh, straight point with the pickups. Uh, moving on to the mid section, there's a kind of little transition area here where you, you blend from the time being higher above the pickup to starting to move down towards uh, the center of the pickup with the bottom underside of the tine to the top line of the front of the pickup. You want the tine to be really sort of in, you know, directly to the center of the pickup in terms of straightness. Um, the general way that I set the pickups is um, I tend to um, get them as close to the end of the pickup as possible without distortion. And as you can't really, you can't see the end of the pickup to the time position very well up here, you want to kind of do that from underneath really. This is very low at the end of the minute, I just want to bring that up a bit on the voicing screw to kind of level it out. Just set a rough level. Really you want these horizontal to start, so parallel with the top surface of the bracket there is a good place to start. So that's the first pass of just rough tying to pick up setting and straightening all the pickups up so that the tines are straight down the middle pointing towards the pickup end. So next we're gonna flip the harp up again. From this side of the harp, from the top side of the harp flipped up, we're gonna have a look at the time positioning a bit more from this side. And you're using the voicing screw here, which is the, it'll be the screw that's furthest away from you when you're looking down from this angle. Don't touch this front screw at all, because it'll set you, it'll take away that baseline setting that you need to iterate from. And just carry on until you've got all of the base section set to that two to three mil measurement of the tine above center of pickup. You can actually get a ruler in there and measure it if you want, but for a visual pass, this is the kind of quickest way to do it initially. And you normally get good results doing it this way. Also to know you may need to adjust your dampers after this because the tine heights are changing again. So you need to double check that again after you've done a voicing pass, rough visual voicing pass like this. Just straightening a few pickups as I go along when I can see them from this side. Now we're moving into the mid section. So we want to start moving the pickups down a little. So with the underside of the tying to the top line of the pickup. So this is looking pretty good here. Now, as mentioned earlier, there's a blend zone where you're transitioning the higher position tines to low position tines. As we move towards the treble, we want to kind of massage the position. So they're gradually moving up so that the tine is a couple of mil above center of pickup by the time you get to this bracket. So you're just gonna gently kind of massage that area there to uh, blend it nicely. That's why we have these extra uh, pink hammer tips here or hard red hammer tips, which also help with that kind of transition zone there between the upper mid area 
in the midsection and the treble. Right, so now we've done our visual setup of the harp with it flipped up, and we'd be, prior to that we did uh, a quick positioning of the pickups. We're now going to go in really deep on the harp and just kind of detail it to the point where it should be sounding pretty magical compared to where it was before we installed all the Rhodes official parts. So, you know, it's an important point that no piano can really be its optimal self without the Rhodes official parts. We've spent so much time um, working these parts out and we know that they work so well across every single model of piano. Um, and you really can push your piano to its best self with the Rose official parts. So we're all really proud of these parts. And, you know, as you'll be able to hear shortly, the culminative effect of installing all these parts into the piano just takes, you know, an okay piano to absolutely stellar. So, um, yeah, can't wait to show you now the result, which is getting ever closer. So um, again, we're going to start at the middle octave and just have a listen to the sound and see what we might need to do to kind of dial it in a bit further. So um, middle C here, it kind of sounds a little boxy to me, a bit kind of nasally. It's almost got like a, a weird sort of peak to it, which I don't really like the sound of. So just to show you what the difference is of, that's more a fun, pure fundamental kind of voicing. So up here, you get that real, quite close to the pickup, so you'll hear that clanking sound, but quite a boxy sound. I prefer like a mixture of that sound with more of a harmonic. So the harmonic is more this sound. So that's gone up a whole octave there. Now you want to, as a, as a guide for voicing, you can go all the way to the harmonic and then just step it back a little. So maybe, a good rule of thumb is to push each time to its harmonic, then bring um, the voicing screw back a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise, and that will get you in the ballpark. Again, a little boxy, take it to the harmonic, and then bring it a quarter turn. Pretty good. So straight away I've noticed this one sounds a bit quiet, so I'm going to bring, compared to that, you can hear the difference. I'm going to bring the pickup in a little more. Probably a little too loud now, but I'm still going to voice it. Back a quarter of a turn, a little more volume for a bit more saturation. And it's gone a little bit nasally boxy again, so I'm just going to push it back towards the harmonic a little. And always compare to the notes around it so you know you're in the kind of right space. Now this piano is old and it's been underwater and all sorts of things. So each time has kind of got its own personality. What we're not trying to do here is blueprint this piano. You know, if we we're going to do that, we'd replace every single time with a Rhodes official tine and we change all the tuning springs as well and then change all the pickups out. But we want to keep some of that character. So don't worry if it, a note doesn't sound exactly the same as the one adjacent to it. You're just trying to get it to be its best self. Anyway, that's too quiet again. You can often look at the pickup line here and you can see notes that are too far in or too far out. You want that line to be quiet. Um, you want the curve to be nice with not too many steps in it, all the way to the top of the piano. So you can see this is, the bass is looking pretty all right there, volume wise. This section's kind of all right, and then it kind of goes, starts to go a bit like that. So we want to, ideally, you know, it does depend if any times have been replaced in the past that are all different lengths. So you might get a few that look like anomalies, but actually they sound all right. But generally you want to look for kind of a nice clean sort of curve to the end of the piano. So. That's just a little tip there. Now this isn't tuned yet, so you'll notice times that are out of tune, but we'll get to that after we've done this first pass. So we're just gonna carry on now with the rest of the piano and 
do the same procedure. Another point I'm going to mention now is that everything that I'm doing here with this particular piano you can also do in the Rhodes uh, V8 Pro software which has per note detailing so you, effectively you're doing exactly what I'm doing here but with a mouse or your controller you're taking the lid off the piano and you nuancing and detailing every single note um, exactly as you want it and the beauty of that you can do it very quickly and then save it and save thousands of different setups okay as you can hear this notes uh, pretty badly out of tune so I don't normally tune I wouldn't tune a whole piano with this uh, it's a tack puller and just get these off the shelf but um, well, I was, we've actually got them in our Rhodes uh, official spares kit a little tuning tool which is just for very quick tuning tweaks say for example you're on a gig and you need to tune your piano and the harp's locked down you don't want to unlock the harp and flip it up and everything it's a nightmare doesn't look great for your audience uh, so yeah you can just get one of these tools and just get in there and move the tuning spring so this note's flat at the minute so what I want to do is bring this spring towards me to get it in tune with the lower G and octave below it so just listen to the G there this G isn't in tune with itself anyway so we're just tuning it to the current overall tuning of the piano but that's going to be tweaked fully after we've done this first uh, detailing voicing pass go so you're basically listening for the beating when that slows down and kind of comes into sync that's when you know you've got it in tune with the, the next octave down something that I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace these old tone bar clips with our Rhodes official tone bar clips here which are lovely silver plated uh, clips uh, again they've got a little bit more mass than uh, the older clips which gives a bit more sustain as well so highly recommend using these rose official time bar clips in all your restoration and service work and um, they look great as well so i'm just going to take all these off what these do these are essentially mass adjusters and these can bring really long sustain to upper times even ones where you hit them there's like nothing there at all you can put a clip on and it's like completely transformed so i'm going to take these old clips off So we've got one clip on here at the minute on this note, one of our new Rose official clips. I'm going to put one on every single note because really there's no reason not to. It, it will only optimize sustain. If you can hear that note now, there's just no life to it whatsoever. If you hear with a clip on, it's a bit quiet. Let's just show you this. I'm going to bring this in closer here. So that's without the clip, pretty dead. Now you put the clip on and find a sweet spot. See there, it's still a bit dead. You have to kind of just move it around until you feel the sound really start to almost like regenerate itself. Pretty good there, even better there. So just a little back from the end and that's what a tone bar clip does magic little device so we're going to go ahead and just install these on the rest now so if you go back and just double check what you've done before and just make sure what you're doing at this point is matching what's lower down the keyboard it's always a good check sounding pretty good now from middle c upwards so now we're going to go from middle c downwards the first thing i'm going to mention about this time here 
is when you play it softly, you can kind of hear a little wobble on the attack. And that's just an anomaly you get with certain tines. So to steady that, you can use tone bar clips, Rhodes official tone bar clips, from the top of the piano, and you can clip them sideways onto the tone bars lower down the piano. So I'm just gonna clip that on now. And that's completely stabilized. The wobble, completely gone. Managed to hit this spot there straight away, which is nice. These ones are slightly awkward to get the pickups because the tone bars are in the way. You can hear on here the dampers here. That's kind of like double hitting a little. So at that point you can just lift the harp, check the note and then just bend it up a little more. There we are, let's solve that. So on my visual pass, I'd set these times a little too high for this piano, so it likes to be set a little lower in this piano, so. Again, you can hear, you go too far into the harmonic. That's a super loud one. This one sounds a little quiet. The end is nigh. Very nice. Okay, so now we've been up and down the whole piano um, with the first detailed pass. So we're just gonna have a quick listen. This is kind of like EQing, you're listening for the amount of bass relative to the amount of uh, like highs in the sound and just kind of you you know using the voicing screws to kind of EQ almost like a high pass filter. So the more harmonic you put in, the more uh, bass frequencies that you'll remove and kind of you can clean up the sound a little bit that way if you want. So uh, sounding great so far. Really happy with where it's at now. So um, yes. It's getting very hot up here and the roads are sounding pretty hot as well.